Good morning. It's nice to be in church this morning, the day after uh, Christmas. And uh, by the calendar, there are only five more days left in the year 2020. You know, that probably gives a lot of folks a little bit of relief. 2020 hasn't been the year we had all hoped it would be as we began the year. I would caution you not to get too optimistic. 2021 is coming, and uh, we, we don't know what's around the corner. One thing we do know is, as Dennis said during his prayer this morning, we, we believe as Christians that the end is, the end is near. Um, so I, it's, it's good to be open again this morning. Um, you know, when the announcement was made that we were going to be closed, I don't know about you, but it felt like uh, the rug had been snatched out from underneath of me. Um, the first day felt like about four days, and then the second day was like a week and a half, and then the third day, well, you, you, you get it. it, it just So I'm, I'm glad that we're back open again. It's nice to see you here. As you look around, there are those that are not with us this morning. Of course, it is right after a holiday. They may be with family and friends. Um, the cold may have kept them away this morning. But as you look around and, and notice who's not here this morning, uh, please reach out to them during the week and let them know that we are back uh, open and uh, that we, we would love to see them uh, next week. Of course, we understand there are those who are you know, concerned about the COVID virus, and I think justifiably so. It has taken a good many lives. And so as, as we uh, look for our, the return of our friends, let's not be judgmental if they don't make it back in right away. Scripture reading this morning is Psalm 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Let's bow our heads for a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings, for this church, for our brothers and sisters, uh, for the assurance that you are with us and you will be with us to the end. Be with us, be with us this morning. Um, please help us to gain a blessing from what we have prepared this morning. In your name we pray, amen. You know, as we look forward um, to the year 2021, it's important that we look forward in context. Do you agree? We may be glad to see 2020 in the rearview mirror, so to speak. Um, but at Adventist, we are realistic enough to understand and know the times that we live in. We've been given plenty of information. And so as we look forward, uh, we need to understand that we do so with an understanding that there may be troublesome times ahead and we need to be prepared for those troublesome times. We need to stay in the word. And as I was looking at uh, the message this morning, I, I began thinking uh, about the prophets as they were given visions and dreams, as they were taken into the secret councils of God and, and shared uh, God shared with them information that no one had heard before, things that were uh, new and different that, that opened their eyes. Things They were told things that the angels probably had not even heard. And, and you know, you think about the messages that Daniel provided, Amos, Isaiah, Zephaniah, John, um, any of these individuals, and, and you wonder what was going through their heads as they were getting these visions and these dreams from God. In many cases, they were shown visions of the end times, the days that we're living in. Um, and they may have, may have seen the looks on faces. Um, they may have um, seen the emotion on the looks that they were seeing. So the message that, the, that they were giving uh, at that time were very real to them because they understood that God is not a God who trifles with us. God is a God who gives us messages with the intent that we take those messages, we learn from those messages and from the word that he has given us and that we grow through those messages and that they, they help prepare us 
for the times that we live in. What would be your, your reaction if you had been present when the prophet Amos said, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel? Or when Zephaniah said, seek ye the Lord, ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be that ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Or if you had been there when John penned the words, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. These are things we've heard for years. They were hearing them for the first time. And yet what the prophets saw only in vision, what they saw in their dreams, we see in person. What they saw in symbols we have in reality. We find ourselves in the days the prophets dreamed about. We are the people of these dreams and visions. Now much, as much time has passed since the days that the scripture were originally written and a lot of prophecy has been fulfilled, but not all, not quite yet. So where are we in the prophetic timeline? Where among the tens of thousands of verses in the Bible do we find ourselves today? You know, we've all attended prophecy seminars. Most of us have. Um, and I've heard some of these things, you know, my whole life. You know, I, I think about Revelation 13, where you see the beast coming up out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns, a blasphemous beast, a persecuting beast, a beast that suffers a deadly wound. Following that, another beast comes out, this time from the earth. A beast that has two horns like a lamb, yet speaks as a dragon. We know this second beast to represent the United States of America. And if you've not had a, a prophecy seminar, if you've not had this information shared with you, please see me afterwards. I'd be happy to share information with you. I'm not going to go through the whole prophecy this morning. But where are we in prophetic timeline? Revelation 13, 11 says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. We are at the pause between these two clauses. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. We live in witness at this pause today. When will the lamb speak as a dragon? It's a great question. And I think if you listen closely, you may be able to hear the dragon beginning to warm up his vocal cords. Americans have long pro professed respect for the Constitution of the United States. Yet despite this professed reverence, there have been and exist even now hostile forces that view the Constitution not as a bulwark of freedom, but as a barrier to their vision of what they believe America should be. There are those who would take every opportunity to erode or restrict our civil and religious freedoms to advance their own agendas. Those who would impose their own ideals, attempting to promote what they consider to be the greater good. But in the end, the result will neither be greater nor good. Are we still at the pause? Not for long. Are we close to the end of time? Absolutely. How close? Recently, I had the opportunity to visit the Tullahoma Church. And as we were waiting to go onto the platform, I was talking with one of the individuals that was set to go onto the platform. And he said, you know, 2020 has been such a train wreck, such an absolute disaster. Surely the Lord will come back in 2021. Now, there were only three of us in the room at the time, myself, this individual of whom I spoke, whose name shall be anonymous, and a 12-year-old boy that attends the, the uh, Tullahoma Seventh-day Adventist School. And the little boy looked at this gentleman, and he said, no, we do not set times. 
And, and the individual looked at the boy and he said, well, now, all I was trying to say was, 2020 has been so bad that as bad as it's been, surely Christ is going to come back. In twi- and, and the guy stopped him again, 12-year-old. No, we do not set times. He said, if you do that, you may jinx the whole thing. I have to admit, I was a little proud of this young man. I was impressed. I asked him if he was prepared to speak that morning. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he'd probably do a good job. But we understand, right? We understand. We're not ignorant of what has been written in Scripture. You know, 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5 Paul says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. That's the one that hits home, doesn't it? Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now this is a pretty comprehensive list. I think Paul covered everything here. Um, When will we see people bearing these characteristics? in the last days, the time in which we live. Now, I'm very partial to the King James Version of the Bible. It's the Bible I grew up with. I'm very comfortable with reading it. It it flows for me. But I ran across another version that uh, covers the same verse, and and I want to share that one because it puts uh, puts a a little bit more, um, well, it says a little differently. So I'm going to read that says, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and have no interest in what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act as if they are religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. You must stay away from people like that. I think this counsel applies to us today. I think we can consider this prophecy fulfilled. You know, within just the last few years, there have been some historical alliances in the religious world. We spoke not long ago about the declaration on the way, a a declaration that there were no longer church dividing issues between the evangelical Lutheran church and the Catholic church. And I know I've mentioned this, I'm going to cover just a little bit here. The Lutheran Church is named, of course, after Martin Luther, a German professor of theology, a priest and a monk who was a central figure in the Protestant Reformation, a Reformation that was instrumental in bringing to an end the rule of the papacy, the civil and religious rule of the papacy. After much Bible study and prayer, Luther rejected a number of the positions of the Catholic Church including the practice of the selling of indulgences or the selling of pardon from sin, and promoted the biblical teaching that salvation is a free gift of God through belief in Jesus Christ as our Redeemer. In the book, The Great Controversy, Ellen White says, foremost among those who were called to lead the church from the darkness of popery, and that's not popery as in the flower, but the rule of the Pope, into the light of a purer faith stood Martin Luther, Zealous, ardent, and devoted, knowing no fear but the fear of God, and acknowledging no foundation for religious faith but the Holy Scriptures, Luther was the man for his time. Through him, God accomplished a great work 
for the reformation of the church and the enlightenment of the world. Most fam famously, the birth of Protestantism came on October 31, 1517, as Luther nailed his 95 theses to the church door at Wittenberg, Germany. When it was demanded that he recant his teachings and writings regarding the doctrinal problems and practices within the Catholic Church, Luther replied, I cannot and I will not recant anything, for to do so goes against conscience, which is neither right nor safe. Here I stand, I can do no other. So help me God. We will need this kind of faith in our lives. In a council in New Orleans in one fell swoop, the principles of Luther's beliefs and what he was prepared to give his life for was swept aside and poof, all of a sudden, no church dividing differences. No doubt Luther would weep if he was alive today. Are we still at the pause? You know, the pieces are beginning to fall into place that will allow for broad sweeping changes and soon the lamb will speak as a dragon. We have reached a state of moral decay that is causing even those who do not attend church or spend time reading and studying the scripture to question what is happening. As we engage our customers, the business that we operate in Shelbyville, Tennessee, the routine conversations about the subject of COVID and what is going on in the world comes up. People who we've been dealing with for years but have never said a word about anything religious. And we have people saying on a regular basis things like, it's just like something out of Revelation. Or this is really biblical, isn't it? Opportunities for witnessing are coming where previously these discussions just didn't even happen. We need to be prepared for these discussions and we need to be aware of what is going on in the world around us. You know, I, I don't watch a lot of news. I have to filter a lot of what I, what I do see in the news because so much of it I believe is more propaganda than news. That's just my personal belief. I'm not encouraging you to believe likewise. But recently I caught a little snippet about something called the Council of Inclusive for Inclusive Capitalism. Have you heard of this? The Council for Inclusive Capitalism. If you get a chance, look that up a little bit on, uh, on your favorite search engine. I'm gonna tell you a little bit. I'm not gonna go into great detail, but I wanna just share this because I think it's worth looking into. Suffice to say, it is a global financial organization whose primary goal is to make the world fairer, more inclusive and sustainable by transforming economies and society. Sounds innocent enough, doesn't it? We're gonna make things better. This organization is focusing on the partnering of worldwide financial and commercial entities under the moral guidance of Pope Francis. His participants include MasterCard, Visa, BP, the United Nations, and Johnson & Johnson, and I've named just a few. But it is worth looking at. You know, unfortunately, most people don't recognize what is happening right under our very noses. We don't see the signs around us. We fail to recognize how the neglect of biblical principle is causing us to deteriorate at our societal foundations. These changes that are taking place have been both gradual and persistent. Now at this point, it would be easy to go through a litany of the changes that have taken place. Changes that have taken place in court rulings, policy changes, society, missteps, all that have undermined the very fabric of our Christian nation. I say we could, but we won't. Quite frankly, we don't have that kind of time. And it would be very discouraging. You know, if we focus on our problems instead of on Christ, we're liable to lose our faith altogether. Amen. We do need to be aware, but let's not spend our time focusing on these types of things. We need to be aware but let's not waste our time focusing on them. 
Because quite frankly, I don't know how the conspiracy theorists sleep at night, if they sleep at all. Um, it's important to remember we've been told all this is going to happen. We've been given ample warning in Scripture. Uh, we just read 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Uh, there can be no doubt we're in the last days. You know, the last days parallel the days of Noah. There are lessons to be learned as we look at Scripture pertaining to the last days and the days of Noah. Matthew 24, 37 through 39 says, But as the days of Noah were, so, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And also Genesis 6, verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Again, any of this sounding familiar? Unfortunately, no. A recent Pew Research survey on religion found that a striking 49% of those surveyed stated that a lack of belief led them to move away from religion altogether. Many attributed this position to science as a reason they don't believe in religious teachings, including one who said, I'm a scientist now. I don't believe in miracles. Others referenced common sense, logic, or a lack of evidence. The survey is really quite fascinating. Some of the individual reasons for not believing included learning about evolution when I went away to college. I just realized somewhere along the, w the line that I really didn't believe it. I'd been taught it, exposed to it, but it wasn't something I believed. And too many Christians are doing unchristian things. That's the one that stings the worst. Right? As the world in general moves farther away from Bible study and church attendance, we as Adventists find ourselves in a different position. While surveys may reveal a lack of belief, we, through Scripture and the sure word of prophecy, have been given an understanding of events that no other people on earth enjoy. We don't have all the details, the dates, the names, the mechanisms that will bring about the fateful change, but we see the signs and we understand the times we live in. And more importantly, we understand who's in charge. The prophetic insights place tremendous insights, uh, tremendous responsibilities on us. We need to share what we know because many well-intentioned people do not realize what is happening in the world today. Christ has given answers that can save those around us, but we must share this information for it to be of any use. So here we are at the pause, waiting for Christ's return. But are we just waiting? Or are we sharing and preparing for Christ's return? In the daily devotional, Maranatha, page 66, we must cherish and cultivate the faith of which prophets and apostles have testified, the faith that lays hold on the promises of God and waits for deliverance in his appointed time and way. The sure word of prophecy will meet its final fulfillment in the glorious advent of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as King of kings and Lord of lords. The time of waiting may seem long. The soul may be oppressed by discouraging circumstances, Many in whom confidence has been placed may fall by the way. But with the prophet who endeavored to encourage Judah in the time of uh, unparalleled apostasy, let us confidently declare the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. So we continue waiting at this pause. We need to be encouraging others during this wait. And we need to stay busy while we wait. And while the concerns about personal contact have hindered some of our work, there is plenty of work to do during this time of waiting. We have to find new and creative ways to share the gospel and to reach out to those 
that we are unable to make direct contact with. We can do mailings. We can make phone calls. We can email. We can text. So we are now waiting and working at this pause. Unfortunately, many will become discouraged while waiting. And let's be honest, as Adventists, we've done our fair share of waiting. But the waiting is not without purpose. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 2, page 194, God's messenger tells us God's unwillingness to have his people perish has been the reason for so long delay. Let's be thankful for the wait because it gives us the opportunity to grow God's kingdom. And as we busy ourselves in the Lord's work, let's play to our strengths. We need to be sharing our unique prophetic message, the one that we were entrusted with over 100 years ago. We need to share the health message. And let's share our personal testimony and witness to the soon return of Christ. You know, as we do that, let's realize that everyone may not be strong in the faith. Let's make a greater effort to encourage them. Let's lift them up in prayer. Let's be praying for one another. And let's remain positive. Let's remain united as a church. You know, every once in a while we run across a very negative Christian. And you know, as try as I might, I have looked and I have looked. And I have just not found that negativity, criticism, or a contentious spirit are spiritual gifts. If you found it and I haven't, please share that with me. I, I really need to know where that is. If this is a particular concern for you, please take time to talk with the pastor or an elder. Um, let's get past that. We have a message unlike any other. And as Christians, we bear a tremendous responsibility for this message. It sounds like a cliche, but it would be a sin to keep this to ourselves and not share it. Despite the challenges and the promises of this past year, I believe God has blessed our church here in Murfreesboro. I'm looking forward to 2021. We are one year closer to Christ's return. Yeah. I want to encourage you, keep the faith, pray, do your Bible studies, share the message with others. Let's be faithful until Christ returns. In closing, I want to read our scripture reading again from this morning, Psalms 27, 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. May God be with us as we move forward into the next year. Number 115, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Be he dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings, for your leading in our lives, for your leading in this church. We ask, Lord, that as we leave this place, that we would be prepared to share with others what you have done for us. Help us to be faithful, Lord. Help us to be ready for your soon return. In your name we pray. Amen.